we'll do a short recollection on what bivariant Chow groups were so that we are all on the same page both literally and otherwise. So, so these as we said before these groups unified the, con the concept of Cho homology groups and cold groups in C H star and C H upper star. Now so if I is a from X to Y is a regular embedding. of some co-dimension D, then we can, then we have those maps which are well known, the Gson morphisms from CHK I upper for shriek from CHK Y prime to CHK K minus R prime plus D for any such fiber square. So, I have X to Y and this is I, then I take Y prime and X prime this. So, and uh, we say that uh, from the CHK of any Y prime for any such fiber square, I have maps to CHK minus R prime plus D, where if I have not mentioned on the slide R prime, okay, so R prime is the relative dimension of the upper morphism. So, if this is I prime, then this is dimension of Y prime minus dimension of X prime. So, any such closed embed, any such regular embedding uh, induces these maps. Similarly, with the by the same token, if uh, I had instead of a regular embedding, Bedding, if I had a flat morphism f from x to y and uh, I had something here, then it is even easier to see that we would have pullback maps if we had uh, instead of regular embedding a flat map, then we would have maps c h k y prime to c h k x prime which would be simply I mean this map would be just f prime star. So, the thing is that f if it is flat it is able to induce a map of uh, Cho groups yeah, on e in each fiber square. If it was a regular embedding it would have done the same thing. So, we consider all maps which are which are made up of regular embeddings and and uh, flat maps. So, we call them LCI maps locally complete intersection morphisms as probably written as x is not. So, <coughs> so the idea is that it should be factorizable as f equals p i where p is smooth and i is a regular embedding. So, we consider all those maps and so that is how bivariant Chow groups are basically going to arise and the point what we want to point out is that so, so the class of LCI morphisms is actually very big. So, if x and y are smooth, oh sorry smooth then actually every map is, a, is locally complete uh, intersection because you know you could take Y. So, the class of LCI morphisms is pretty big. So, it takes up almost it takes up all the morphisms in case you are working with only smooth objects. Now, so we come to the formal definition. So, consider each such morphism f prime from x prime to y prime phi word over x by such a morphism. Then, uh, a class in the bivariant Chow group is a family of morphisms. So, just as when I was a regular embedding, I was able to give me a family of morphisms. So, I was able to give me at that time a family of morphisms from I prime to something uh, k minus R prime plus D X prime. So, that when I was a regular embedding it was able to give me a family of morphisms. So, the bivariant Chow group will consist of all such families of morphisms. So, <coughs> which uh, are able, so in particular so C H P X, uh, X F to Y would be a family of morphisms which has the specific property that it takes from k to k minus R prime plus P. So, for instance, therefore, if uh, if I from x to y is a regular embedding, then I gives me a collection of maps from C H K Y prime to C H K minus R prime plus D in X prime, which means I actually gives me a class I here in C H D I from x to y. That is what it means to say that it gives me because I gives me a family of such maps. I could say that I gives rise to a class in this bivariant Chow group. Now, so and the and we of course we will require that these families satisfy certain basic compatibility properties. We will say they are compatible with uh, flat pullbacks, proper push forwards, and intersection products. So, so what so what kind of objects are these? So, for instance, if I was working with just the identity map. So, if I was working with the identity map then I would actually have this 
that would just be the cho cohomology group. If I was working with the structure map, so this would be some spec of k, this would simply be the cho homology group. So as you can see that the bivariant Chow groups contain both the cho cohomology and the cho homology theory. If actually I am working with a regular embedding, then this is just the Cho group of all objects with support inside X. So this bivariant theory actually contains all the Cho theories inside it. So now the thing is we can actually multiply bivariant Chow groups. So how do we multiply bivariant Chow groups together? So suppose I have two composable morphisms x to y to z, I have f, I have g and I have z prime sitting here, I have y prime sitting here, x prime. So all the squares we will be considering will all be fiber squares, I mean there are no commutative diagrams here, only fiber squares. So, so if I have a class here, so I have, suppose I have a class here in ch some q of y to z and suppose I have a class here in chp f x to y. So what is this class able to do? This class allows me to move from the child group of z prime to the child group of y prime and the class c allows me to go from the child group of y prime to the child group of uh, x prime which means I could talk about this object c dot d which I would put inside we are going to add these two numbers p plus q g f x to z it's quite clear how we would be multiplying these uh, objects so so this would be a product on these objects now there are there are many other things you could do with it for instance you could so you have these bivariant chow groups you can push forward bivariant chow groups i think that is on the that is probably on the next slide yes so <coughs> suppose that so we would have proper push forward so suppose h from x to z is proper proper and uh, so we have f equals g h that is we have x h z y g and this whole thing is f. So now given a class in this I want to get a class in this how do I get that? So I make fiber squares on top. So given a class in the in chfx plus y so I can I go from the child group of y prime right to the child group of x prime and because h is proper I mean h prime rather h prime is proper I just push it and come to the child group of z prime. So what does that mean? I ha actually have a push forward map. I have a push forward map that takes me from the fx plus x to y to the g z2 y. So, so in this sense we have push forwards. Now the pullback is actually even easier. The pullback is quite trivial. So how do we pull back by variant Chow groups? So I have something fibered over it and uh, so I want, so given something here I want to, so given a, some, a class in this Chow group I want to pull it somewhere here. So what do I have to do? I have to take something fibered over this and so how do I move from the Chow group of here to here? We just pretend that, it, so it is fibered over this but this is already fibered over this so all we do is just pretend that this is fibered from this and just take the same map. So the pullback is pretty trivial. Flatness. No, the by pulling by the bivariant does not require flatness. So <coughs> But, but the but the pullback set is compatible with are supposed to be flat pullbacks. So yeah, so pulling back, so pulling back is basically just restating the whole thing. So there's nothing to. So now, as we said before, each uh, so yeah. So now each regular embedding gives me a family of maps. We said we mentioned that before. So corresponding to i from x to y, i gives me a class, as we wrote this before, C H D from i to x to y where d is the is the codimension of the embedding. Similarly 
as we said uh, again a flat map would induce a class F which would also lie in CH some uh, maybe N of F from X to Y or better still P. And so the class of a general LCI morphism F which would be PI so a class of this would be this simply this product. So in other words what would this do how would this operate it would operate by taking pullbacks P star and then putting so and then taking the, the GSN map so this would actually operate by first so this asks us to pull back and this asks us to take the GSN map. So <coughs> this is how we get the class of so this is so this is what we call the orientation class of this morphism. Now here we have the important formula that uh, which allows us to actually co compute things. So if we have a fiber square like this the we have f and we have f prime and we have g and we have g prime. So suppose they are both LCI morphisms the codimension here the codimension of f prime is d prime and the codimension of uh, f is d. Then we have the orientation class of f we can pull it back we can pull it so this is g and this is g prime so we can pull it back here now we want to know is this the same thing as the orientation class of f prime well that would be the case if g was a flat map but otherwise we will have to multiply something here so what do we have to multiply we have to multiply the churn class of e where e is the excess intersection bundle so this is a so this has an excess intersection so this has an intersection bundle and this has an intersection bundle you pull it back and take the quotient that would be the excess intersection bundle so just, just that we have to multiply by the excess so as you can see this formula is obviously very useful so so now that finishes our introduction and oh, okay so we have the, I probably mentioned all of this so for composable maps we have gf equals fg now one of the things about that formula is that you notice that it does, doesn't say anything about the factorization. So it says that no matter how you factorize the map you get the same intersection class. So showing that is actually quite a nice problem and yeah and that formula. So if G is actually a smooth map is smooth then we actually have an isomorphism. So now if it is smooth if it is if there was any map to start with x to y then I could multiply it with a g and get something in the chp minus n g f x to z I always have this map just by multiplying this but in case this happens to be smooth I can also say that this is an isomorphism so <coughs> these are two very important properties Here x doesn't have to be any particular base no 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 and, okay. anything just the property of g so today's aim is to define a bivariant version of blocks higher Chow groups. So as we mentioned, so for <coughs> so, bio, so blocks higher Chow groups, so for a scheme X, suppose Z Q X N denotes the free abelian group generated by cycles of codimension Q in X cross delta N, which uh, meet all the faces properly. So once you just digest that definition, then now given any simplices, we have these uh, face maps, right? We have N of these face maps. I am not wrong so well n plus 1 of them I mean i goes from 0 to 1 0 to n yes now we could we could pull back by those so I mean we just put x cross delta n I should probably have written an x cross over there so <coughs> using those we can pull back and therefore we can define these maps as I start pullbacks from z q x cross delta n plus 1 back to x cross delta n or, or actually in that notation x n and that is the notation we use so so this is x comma n plus 1. Now we take an alternating sum of those and that allows me to define a complex and its homology is the is the higher Chow group. So the two things we want so this is an impo very important definition of block and uh, so the, the, the important things we want to mention about this are that there is a product structure there is a product structure that is you just add the coefficients on top and you multiply those as well 
it's covariant for proper maps and contravariant for all maps if x is smooth and another thing which I of course should have written over there is that CHQ of x0 is simply CHQ of x. Now we should have mentioned that on the slide itself. So if you just put, uh, I mean you know, the zero homology group is just the ordinary Chow group. It's a contravariant to the contravariance is actually true for here. It's actually if ambiguous. You say if x is smooth, but actually all you need. Yeah, you told me that the target should be smooth. Yes, because yeah, as it makes sense, if the target is smooth, you can move the uh, the variety sufficiently well. Yeah. So thank you for that. I mean, so yeah. So. We will come to the formal definition. Let us sort of talk about what we want in a bivariant higher Chow group. So, so basically, this is so this is how we understand it. This is the obvious extension. So, it should induce maps. So, it should contain two things. First of all, CHP FXYN and M. And what are we looking for in that? That should be able to change the Chow group on top, and it should move from for each n. It should be able to take it from n to n plus M. So. Uh, beside the statement it should have a for all n written on the side. So T K G n. So what should a class in this look like? So we will come to the exact definition. So this or a class here say T should be able to give me maps starting from any n. So I go to the so for any k and for any n. Last time we had only one variable over there and c h something what uh, x prime here yeah. and for every n it should go to n plus m and this should happen for all n. The, the slide should probably say for all n. So for instance if you had a class uh, if you had a class in uh, chp x m at every level it would give me a map from n to n plus m. So, so this is so we are just discussing what we want. So what we will actually do here is that, but you know, this raising should be related to each other, right? The maps that raise the level from 1 to n plus 1 should be related to the maps that raise from 2 to n plus 2. So what we will actually do is, we will not, we will not directly define it to be a collection of maps that go from n to n plus m, because then we can't really understand how they are related to each other. So what we will do is simply, we will say, this is a family that raises the level from 0 to m, and show that if it goes from 0 to m, it is possible to go from any n to n plus m. So that is what we will do. So as I am saying, so we will define it as a family that simply raises the level from 0 to m and then show that in general I can use it to go m steps from any point I start. So and so we will also require the classes to be compatible with pullbacks, push forwards and higher refined Gson morphisms. So the pullbacks and the push forwards will be easy but the higher refined Gson morphisms we are going to define what they are. So higher refined Gissin morphisms. So what do we have to do here? So okay, that diagram is pretty clear. So we have i from x to y which is a regular embedding, co-dimension of i is d and co-dimension of i prime is d prime. So now look, so what we are doing is we want to go from the higher Chow group on y prime to the higher Chow group on x prime. So what we need to do is we simply, uh, we need to pull back by i prime star and simply multiply by the required churn class of the bundle. So this will become clear as soon as we look at the excess intersection formula. So if you look there, what, what is on this side? So this is g star of f and on the other side we have f prime and the churn class. So if these were intersection, if, the, if you know these were regular embeddings, so that, so this f prime here simply asks us to pull back and then we multiply by the churn class. That is what was happening in the zero dimensional case. I mean sort of zero order case. So all we have to do here is pull back that is i prime star and multiply by the ordinary by the excess intersection bundle that we need. So, so here y mm -hmm. prime is a morphism from? No y prime is an object in okay y prime is an object in chk of y prime m. Okay over there yeah. which is actually. Uh, so we are taking it to something here. At usual higher child group okay. Yeah this is the usual higher child group. So I just pull it back. That's easy, and then I and then I multiply by the Chan class, which is in the zeroth order Chan group. Uh, here, this Chan class, uh, mm -hmm. class is lying in the usual. Chan group. It's lying in the usual Chan group. Yes. No. 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 So this is in the higher Chan group, but this is not. Okay. So th so then you just have the product. So just multiply two objects. So and as you can see from G star i equals c i okay, i prime. E here e is the difference. Of oh, e is the excess normal bundle. 
oh e, yeah e is equal to d minus d prime yeah sorry e is equal to d minus d prime so and from that formula g star i equals c e, e dot i prime we see that if m was equal to 0 this is just the Gissing map right because then that is just expresses the excess, excess intersection formula so it is quite it is obvious that this is i 0 is just the ordinary Gissing map so this is our clearly the higher refined Gissin morphisms so yes so what we have to do is yeah so there are some so there is a question of basically we, whatever bivariant how chow, chow groups we get we should be able to multiply them with ordinary bivariant chow groups so here there is a question of since you know we did not define it sort of uniformly from all n to n plus m we defined it only from 0 to m there is a question of multiplying on the left or multiplying on the right we will see multiplying on the left is little more difficult than multiplying on the right and we will come to the <coughs> formal definition so so in general so start with a class in the ordinary bivariant Hatchow group that is CHP FXY now for any M should we see that there are actually morphisms that go from Y prime comma M to X prime comma M so, so the point to note here is that we are not working with bivariant higher Chow groups because we haven't even defined them as yet so this is an ordinary bivariant higher Chow group but even a class in there is able to give me maps on the higher Chow groups so so how is that done so we just factorize c equals t dot f as we did last time for some t in chp minus rx and uh, you know this is if and that is py so how do we define this map first we pull back from y prime to x cross y prime then we apply the higher the higher refined Gissin morphism here which takes me from x cross y prime to x prime and then simply multiply by the pullback of the ordinary chow cycle and we yeah. have that object so what does this say this says that a class in the so if you think about it this is the first level of this is the zeroth level of what we wanted to prove we wanted to say that a higher bivariant chow group allows me to go from any n to n plus m so in this case in zero it allows me in particular to go from m to m that is the first step which we showed so it allows me to go from m to m so a class in by in a bivariant chow group not only induces a map on chow groups but also a map on higher chow groups right so for m equal to 0 these are the usual maps which follow from the definition of c because then there would be just i f upper, upper shriek now we come to the definition of higher bivariant chow groups so a class here as we said is a collection of maps so the only change we have made here is that it goes from comma 0 to comma m note that we did not assume that it goes for all n to n plus m we will show that so it just raises the level from 0 to m and it is compatible with push forwards pullbacks and higher refined Gissin maps for each fiber square so here we have written down the, the explicit version of what it means for it to commute with Gissin morphisms so so as you can see so how does it go so okay so uh, what I should have mentioned here is that uh, where alpha lies okay that's a I mean you know it's trying to fit things on the slide so alpha is def so alpha is lying in CHK of Y prime I'm sorry about that so yes so it's lying in the chk of y prime so you first apply i upper shriek it goes here then you use this uh, one to go here or on the other hand what you could have done is you could have directly applied the y variant high child group here gone here and then but now it is in the mth level so what you have to do is you have to apply the higher refined Gissin morphisms and then take i m upper shriek and then you go there and that's supposed to commute so is that so is that diagram clear so so this is our definition what we have now we will show that it's we, it is now possible to go from any n to n plus m so okay so that is clear from the definitions the the first one on top that on the zero now as i said before there is a question of multi, being able to multiply on the left or multiply on the right actually before even proving that we can move from n to n plus m we will need the products in advance that is why we are defining the products beforehand so suppose I am given C in uh, at the nth and I have two ordinary uh, higher chow, uh, bivariant chow groups D1 and D2 so as you can see it is very easy to multiply on the right that is <coughs> because uh, where is it? Uh, uh -huh. can you prove is it easy to prove the first statement which is obvious from yeah I mean yeah it's just so uh, just put m equals 0 so okay, okay. it is the exact same definition okay. there is no difference in the okay. it is exact it just repeats the whole definition so so now that I have that so so now we have to be we have to think clearly so 
suppose that I have, uh, so this is, I mean, that makes little sense if you just look at, very, it's very easy if you just look at this diagram. So, so this goes from y to y2 and this goes from x1 to x, right. So here we have f and we have, uh, so g1 goes from x1 to x and uh, g2 goes from y to y2. So we want to multiply on the two sides. Now the thing is that on this we have the higher bivariant Chow group. These two are ordinary bivariant Chow groups. So suppose I have something factored over here, y2 prime, y prime, x prime, x1 prime. So suppose I have a class, so I have a class C here, a class D2 here and a class D1 here. I want to define a product of this. So now as you can see C dot D2 is very easy to define because you start with the Chow group at the 0th level, go to the Chow group at the 0th level and then come to the Chow group at the mth level. That's easy. But what is not so easy is that, so, but suppose I was trying to define this product D1 dot C. So I start with the Chow group here Y prime. At the 0th level I come to the mth level. But now this is in the ordinary, bivari ordinary bivariant Chow group. So what do I need? I need, I should be able to go from mth level to mth level and that is what we showed in the two slides ago. That a class in the ordinary higher Chow group, uh, ordinary bivariant Chow group allows me to go from the mth level to the mth level. So if to, to multiply on this side, we, it's actually a little more difficult than to multiply on that side. So and it's also clear that you know that the product is, uh, what is that, associative, right? no matter what uh, you do. Now, uh, yeah, and also it's clear that you can define the pullback in the trivial way. So the pullback is once again just uh, uplifting. But but as you can see, uh, when we wrote down the expression for the pullback, we only multiplied on the right. We did not multiply on the left. On the left would be a little more difficult to prove. So, so these are the parts we need to actually come up with the actual proof. So what we want to do is define a more general product. We want CHP x to m and m we should be able to go to m plus n. That is what we want to do. So what we need to show effectively is that any C in CHP m induces mass from, it from the nth level to the n plus mth level for all n and k. And uh, so now what we have to do is we have to go through some proofs. So what we will do is we will actually prove that. We can actually prove that fact again. That if you had a smooth map G of relative dimension D, you actually can show that the same thing can be repeated. You again have an isomorphism. You can actually show that. So that's so, that, so that's not a trivial verification. That's like a, like a couple of pages. So you didn't yet define this product structure. You no, no, no. We want to define. That's what I'm saying. Want to define. Okay. It's, uh, it's not defined as yet. So I mean, we will define by the end of the. So. So are you going to be using the definition of products for the higher child groups somehow implicitly? Uh, uh, that's going to be quite messy. The product of the higher child groups. Group, yeah. Yes. Are you, so you are going to using that one. You don't define new definition. No, no, no. We, so, so you assume we, that there is a product structure already. On what? On the higher Chow group. So on the higher Chow groups you already have a product structure. Yeah, on the higher bivariant Chow groups you are trying to define yeah, a product yeah. structure. What I mean is that mm -hmm. the definition for the product mm -hmm. of higher Chow group itself is quite totally. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we, we will not use it very deeply. So we will just use it as a dot. It will just appear as a black box. So. so so what we need here is, you know, so what we have to show here again is that if it is a smooth morphism, like the last time we had isomorphism, so you actually have to go through a little, uh, rather slightly long proof. So you can actually show that it actually does induce an isomorphism. I probably should have written an isomorphism sign below it. And we actually should, so here I have sort of uh, suppressed the proof. So all these three statements, these last three statements, they require proofs. So. So uh, what you can do is once again you can actually show that if you have a, that any such map in C from CHP i x to y to n allows me, can be factorized as, a, as part of a higher Chow group and uh, that. And uh, so in general for, and in general for any f, so it can be factorized. So those three statements actually require proofs, but it's sort of too long to quote here. So now, so now what we ultimately have is, 
we want to show that, the, so we have got the factorizations in hand, we have suppressed the proof sort of. So now for any n greater than or equal to 0, we want to say that there are maps from CKG n from the nth level to the n plus mth level as promised before. So now given that part is in, uh, I mean suppose that part is already in hand, then it's easy. So if you have CH prime r with C prime lying in the higher Chow group, then all you have to do is you pull, you pull back from here to here, that keeps from n to n. Now, <coughs> Uh, then you then you do the higher Giesen morphism and then carries keeps the nth level and then you, it's just multiplication by that ordinary object over there and it goes from n plus m. So I believe this should be m. Yeah, that's an m. Sorry about that. So, so that is an m over there and so so th this is just a, a succession of three maps. And so, so now we know, so now we understand how to multiply because so this goes from 0th level to nth level and from nth level to n plus nth level. So now we understand exactly how to multiply. We didn't have that in advance. So we have this, uh, so now we have this product as you can see we go from the 0th level to the nth level and we know how to go from the nth level to the n plus mth level. So it's quite clear how we define the product. So now we have so push forwards and pull backs can be defined in very easy ways. Cycle class maps are a little more complicated but we will have to use blocks definition but uh, this is the part which I will need to discuss with Gene Hume so about whether there are motivic filtrations so I have been wondering about those. So if any of you are particularly Gene Hume has any advice it would be great for me. So like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it is good that I have not wasted and I hope I have not wasted a lot of your time. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to use your mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, so my my basic plan was to start with a sort of cycle class map from the higher Chow, from the bivariant Chow groups, and I had two uses for this. The first one is to was the motivic filtrations we defined in the last lecture, and this is the second. So here we are just using that understanding to form a higher uh, version of the bivariant Chow group. So, so <coughs> that's the idea. So, mm -hmm. some connection with the. Uh, Uh, I mean, uh, the, the, I mean, I would be glad if there is, but I don't. Really, I know very little about number theory. I would be delighted if there is. So, <coughs> maybe using K theory and then on, I have no idea. But that's actually the curious part I wanted to ask you about mm -hmm. because uh, generally, Chow groups and higher Chow mm -hmm. groups, uh, we define these objects so as to make them into some kind of groups that behave mm -hmm. like what is called motivic convolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But these guys are actually supposed to be comparable to the Q lens K group. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the Q lens K group and these guys are actually isomorphic of the tensor yeah. with the Q yes. if the varieties are smooth varieties. Right? Yes. But then uh, if I have a two smooth varieties mm -hmm. and morphism between these two smooth varieties, then this bivariant child group is isomorphic to mm -hmm. the usual child group. The order of the source. Right. So, uh, so that means that uh, these bivariant child groups are already related to the Q lens K group. So, so yes, yes, yes. So the, the only thing then that interesting we can try to do is to give an interesting construction of interesting classes in those K groups. Hmm. Um, do you think we can? Hmm. Uh, we, 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 yeah, we, for that we have to look very carefully at the map between them. Uh, yeah, that that definitely. I mean, I've been looking at this in look, pursuing this in many directions. I've even been wondering about you know. Like uh, if uh, it is possible somehow to use the these bivariant Chow groups to define some kind of negative Chow groups, um, just uh, on the on the sort of uh, on the same token as negative K groups. So that's actually very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, because you know, this kind of is a construction that contains all the uh, that can sort of contains all sorts of Chow theory. Ah. So this is more uniform than. So actually, your indices for mm -hmm. the uh, higher bivariant Chow groups, the indexes can actually only, at the level can only increase. Yes. Uh, actually, you can deviate that. I think it could, so it could decrease. Uh, I mean, it, it could go positive or negative because. Uh, How about the yeah, yeah. In fact, in fact, most cases, I mean, even ordinary higher Chow, even ordinary bivariant Chow groups, uh -huh. if you had this, if you just consider this map, X from spec K, then, uh, well, well, I mean, if it is a flat map from uh, uh, X cross Y to Y, for instance, then this is actually a class in minus. Is always uh, there are a lot of negative. So here the level means the, the index. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, by level you mean the other index? So the other is not this co-dimension or dimension. No, 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 no. So here your definition. Uh, when I was looking mm -hmm. at it carefully, 
uh, the, mm -hmm. the second index actually only increases. Yeah, because we, yeah, we defined it from 0 to m, yes, right. so in case upwards. you want to define negative to a yes. degree, yes. you have to define uh, yes. how to decrease those numbers. Yes. But that's not actually discussed over here. I mean, I, I have thought about that, but I have this feeling that if I define that, uh -huh. I am not able to exactly show that it's not empty. I mean, we could just define, right? We could define this, okay. but the worry is that whether we can, we have to first be able to show that it's a non-empty object. The well, other point is that actually yeah. relative case here is a zero mm -hmm. index is smooth. Yeah, so it is non-zero only when yeah. we have a singular variety. Yes. So these groups can be interesting only when you have a singular variety. Mm -hmm. So unless you take singular variety, mm -hmm. you are not going to be able yeah. to get anything oh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, so that makes sense. So, so I mean, keep saying that yeah. you should yeah. consider these yeah. yeah. singular yeah. varieties. Yeah. Otherwise, you mm -hmm. cannot define mm -hmm. these. Mm. Index yeah, that makes sense. To, yeah. So I guess maybe mm. you can try yeah. later. I mean, I've been looking at a lot of things related to this in general, sir. So. Uh, okay. Mm. So, so you've been thinking about that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. This. And also correspondences, as we were just talking a few minutes ago. I see. Um, then, um, were you also able to define some cycle class maps? Uh, I mean, the simple cases. I, I mean, for instance, I mean the cycle class map for this bivariant. I mean, I mean it's yeah. sort of it's sort of defined, but it's sort of on the whiteboard rather than on the paper. So uh -huh. I'm not hundred percent sure, uh -huh. but I don't think there is a, any problem with doing it. But do you use some existing construction of a cycle class map for higher charges? Yes. So Otherwise that, that it would be very messy. And uh, the I mean, the thing is that I want to do it in two ways. There would be a more uh, uh, inherent kind of way with. Uh, because uh, because you see the the isomorphism between uh, between the chow group and the bivariant chow group that is there at the chow level but that is not there at the cohomology level ah, ah, I see. there is there is actually a difference so so the Which thing one has a bigger image? Hmm? Which one generally has a bigger image? i believe the home cohomology group would be bigger right uh, i mean the, the image of mm -hmm. the and the image of bivariant child, mm -hmm. which one has a bigger image? No, the bivariant child would have naturally have a bigger image. Ah, so they're generally not necessarily yeah. equal, yeah. actually. So, I'm a, uh, so uh, I mean, I want to define the cycle as I did with the filtrations. I mean, you know, there is an easy way to define it and there is a difficult way, which is more inherent, which actually uses Saito's method. And I want to do both ways and check that the two cycle classes are exactly the same. Uh, so, the cycle class is sort of still on the... Uh, but then, uh, if the images bivariant ones are bigger, mm -hmm. then can you possibly prove certain things that are not uh, verified for the Hachi conjecture to be true for these bivariant cases? Oh, the singular, wow. Take the singular cohomology, take mm -hmm. the singular, uh, bivariant singular cohomology, mm -hmm. and there are certain cases where we don't know whether Hachi conjecture is true, but if the bivariant mm -hmm. groups have a higher, actually bigger, mm -hmm. bigger uh, image, then maybe it might actually touch certain they were not actually yeah. touched by the user psychic uh, well, that's uh, I have not thought about that so, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean look pursuing it in various directions and yeah but yeah that's true I mean well, one has to see more carefully yes whether the bivariant chow groups can be used on Hodge conjecture that's that's a very good question actually yeah. I mean yeah, but I have, yeah. So, Version of theorem. Uh, which theorem? Uh, HN of KN is Chow N. Uh, well, uh, I have not looked at the K part of this because I think the between the K groups, uh, there's some th there are some issues with the K groups. I mean, uh, I mostly applied this on the Chow part, but on the K side, we have we we are missing some tools. We are not have, we don't have things like excess intersection formula sort of. I mean, the basic tools that are used here are sort of absent on the K side. So, I'm not... Wait, so that might actually come from uh, what was already known. Because he, in, in mm -hmm. he proved the theorem uh, that uh, if we have two smooth varieties, then actually then the second variety is not necessary. So the first yes. variety actually gives a, a usual child group. So, by variant cases, the child group the first guy. But for the first guy, we already have, for smooth variety, we already have what is what is called the ghost standard conjecture to be true. Uh, the ghost standard conjecture is actually implying the mm. Brooks formula that he is talking about. Okay. So the Jariski cohomology of the Shifify the K theory of HN mm -hmm. is actually isomorphic to the child groups if, if we have a smooth varieties of the field. Mm. So I think that's actually proved by, by combining Finland's argument from this, this uh, theorem. Okay. So I think that's not okay. a problem. But, uh, 
Okay, that makes sense, I mean, I guess. There is no question. Thanks for the speaker. Um, Thank you.